This material is added to your home appliances, car dashboards and furniture to make them indestructible. That's right, plastics. But what exactly makes them indestructible? The secret lies in the process of compounding. Compounding of polymers is basically a process where we enhance properties of plastic. Suppose electronic industries require a fire resistant compound. So we add fire resistant additives to polymers. Shreyansh Mehta started gateway compounding in 2023 and makes over 2 crores a month. What are essentially your revenue streams? We are generating revenue from home appliance, automobiles and the furniture sector. So let's have a tour of the factory once. So as you can see, the material is loaded on the bezin end floor. The recipe is mixed in the mixer upstairs. These strands come out and to achieve finished product in the form of granules. How expensive are they? A lab like this will cost you anywhere from 10 to 15 lakhs. Whom do you see your competitors? The others are seeing us as a competitor. <laughs> that is a good sign. So what does gateway compounding actually do? Compounding of polymers is basically a process where we enhance properties of plastic. So once we procure that RM, we add further additives and we compound those additives with the polymers. The entire process is called compounding. Suppose electronic industries require a fire resistant compound. So we add fire resistant additives to polymers. Similarly, say if you want to compound dashboard materials or bumper materials, we add impact modifiers to that. How big is your factory? Our factory is currently spread across was approximately 22,500 square feet. So let's have a tour of the factory once. Uh, I'll just show you the machinery and the shop floor. So like you can see, this is our production area. That's a dehumidifier. And the purpose of a dehumidifier is to eliminate moisture from the polymer. So engineering polymers are highly hydroscopic, right? So they, they catch moisture very fast. So before processing, we dehumidify the material. So all the testing and checking happens here before it leaves. So as you can see, uh, the material is uh, loaded on the bezin end floor. The recipe is mixed in the mixer upstairs. So these high-speed mixers mix the material to have homogeneity in the material. And then they are dropped directly in the hopper of the uh, main extruder. Blending happens and uh, these strands come out. And uh, these strands are put into the water. And we ensure a controlled temperature of the water to make sure that the polymer is not affected. The plastics extrusion happens anywhere from 160 degrees to 280 to 300 degrees. So when these strands come out, they're very hot. At times, they carry water with them. So because they carry water with them, this is called an air knife. There's a very high pressure of air which pushes the water down and ensures that the strand that follows into the cutter has no water residue on. Again, this is a cutter where these strands go in and to achieve finished product, which is our finished product in, term, in the form of granules. This is our uh, final product, basically this is our finished good. This machine is basically called a vibro screener. When the cutting of the strand starts, Sometimes, you know, what happens is there's a large piece, a small piece, uh, those issues happen. So the vibro screener ensures that a uniform size is put into the collection tray. Any other size is eliminated through the vibro screener. And also there is a very strict system. The machinery setting, everything is strictly only allowed to be touched or handled by the supervisor. No operator is allowed to touch any configuration of the machine. So what kind of development has your company seen in the manufacturing capacity, I would say? And how do you see it? going forward. What we've seen is when we started this company, initially we were just doing a, a small amount of business of 30 tons or 40. Our plant capacity was 200 tons. And as of today, we have touched capacity of 250 tons with uh, sales of around 150 to 180 tons. Because of this fast uh, growth, we are having a second line also installed, which will push our plant capacity to 500 metric tons a month. So how much does it cost to get a new machine, get it established? So we are sourcing our machine from China. The import is happening after we are giving our uh, requirements and the kind of specific design we want. Our machine cost is around 1.2 crore. So where do you source your material? From? I mean, we are currently sourcing everything from Bangalore, but however, there are certain orders where large sum of quantities is required. So that we don't take from traders, we take directly from uh, companies. We do import from uh, Middle East, China. So this is our lab room. Our lab equipment that we have procured are from this company called International Equipment. So these are measured for each polymer so that you uh, know what is the desired requirement and what you have achieved. So that is the basic purpose of doing the test. This is a HDT machine, heat deflection temperature measuring machine. This helps us understand the heat tolerance level of a polymer. What you see there is a UTM machine that is called a universal tensile machine. That helps you understand the mechanical parameter of tensile strength, flex modulus, flex strength, along and finally that is our density machine where we can um, measure the density of a polymer. 
So the machines that you showed us, how expensive are they? A simple mechanical property measuring lab like this will cost you anywhere from 10 to 15 lakhs. So now we'll just have a look at the injection molding machine. So the reason why we have an injection molding machine is so those granules are put into the hopper over here. So we mold the granules into various shapes. This particular specimen is used for measuring your UTM, tensile uh, properties. There is another specimen of a different shape and size that's used to me measure your impact strength. So there are two standards for that, which are internationally followed, ISO and ASTM. Different customers require different measurements. We have both the facilities in our mold. While talking to your workers, they mentioned that this facility works 24 by 7. Now, how do you maintain all the machines? Any manufacturing firm must run 24 hours because uh, that's the only way you can achieve economies of scale as well. If the machine stop, our production will stop, hota hai, which is a form of loss itself. At the customer's end, if the customer is solely reliable on us, then they have nine stoppages, which is actually a huge penalizing factor in these industries. To ensure that that doesn't happen, we have preventive measures in place. We have uh, different provisions. There's allocation of workers in different, different shifts. And since we're getting an additional line, we'll always ensure that those things never happen. So we don't really see compounding happening in the southern part of India much. So what has your company done different? The compounding industry majorly relies on the automobile industry. And uh, automobile industry has been established in the north from the beginning. In south, however, it has gained traction. So somewhere we can correlate that, you know, where an automobile hub is created, compounders are born there automatically. However, the application of compounding materials is not just restricted to automobiles. It is also towards your home appliances and telecom sectors and infrastructure as well. We are generating revenue from the home appliance sector right now, automobile sector and uh, furniture sector. In terms of USP, so one USP definitely I would say is our vicinity where we help uh, the companies around us manage their inventory level. Second, uh, our main objective and sole objective is to meet the customer's requirements. We are very flexible that way and we give them the product that they want. And also we give value proposition to the customer. Oh yeah, that, that, that's the biggest one. <laughs> like the prices that we have set for our products not just a strategy since we're a new company but it's also to ensure that you know exploitation does not happen in this industry if we talk about revenues monthly how much is your turnover but at the moment we are clocking in somewhere between 1.2 to 1.5 crores a month since month 7 itself we were operationally broken even and with our additional line and uh, the pending orders so we should be doing 2 to 2.2 crores a month and uh, at the end of the year we genuinely hope to achieve 3 crores a month so, automobile industry is a huge industry, as in there are a lot of parameters and guidelines. You have to get approval. How lengthy is this process? See, I mean, the process takes anywhere from uh, six months to three years. First, there's an assessment of your plant. Uh, you need to have certain certifications. So, this plant is ISO certified. That helps us to at least start an interaction with big uh, automobile companies. Once you get an RFQ from a company, from there, it can take up to eight months to one year for your uh, product to get approved if you match all the parameters to start business with them. So that's that's how long the period is for approvals. Whom do you see your co competitors? The others are seeing us as a competitor. That is a good sign. That's a very good point. Current compounders in the market have been there for 40, 30 years. We've already managed to have a respectable share in the uh, in the region. And now they see us as competitors even though we are just a year old. But we have a long way to go. We still have a lot of hard work to do and a lot of uh, achievements to achieve. Are there any macroeconomic factors that are affecting the demand of compounding polymer in general? So what the government has done is to encourage domestic manufacturing, any material that is imported that has to be certified by the BIS authority. So that has created a constraint to a lot of the demand that is there in the market, right? To, to fulfill the demand that constraint has been created. So for players like us, that's an opportunity to be BI, BI certified, be homegrown and service the customers as per the norms of the government. So where do you see your export opportunities? Uh, in terms of industry, wherever there's an automobile manufacturing hub, that's where our material can definitely be utilized. In fact, uh, we do have a customer. On a longer run, they will definitely help us uh, supply globally to their global unit. Again, these are all work in progress. We just have to have a positive uh, mindset and keep working hard towards it. So someone of our age, if he wants to get into manufacturing, what kind of he has to incur or what are the prerequisites that are required? Including fixed and working capital, you'll require anywhere between 5 to 7 crores. What you need to first do is you need to have a very strong team which has a good polymer background. Do your research in the kind of machineries you want to buy. Then you start working on your, your complete project in terms of where do you hire the people from? Where do you buy the machines from? Uh, where will you source the raw material from? Who are your target customers? Understand their certification requirements. Understand what kind of uh, testing parameters 
parameters they require and where is the raw material sourced from which machine is the best to convert that raw material into the finished product your customer wants whenever your plant hits a 70% capacity it's ideal to expand start thinking about or start expanding that time. so thank you so much sir it was great learning about your manufacturing unit about your company thank you i i hope that the two of us were uh, of some help or guidance or uh, i mean whatever knowledge we could pass on we did and i hope it will be fruitful for you guys